What's the best way to get digital audio into your DAC? Well, there's a number of ways to do that. Uh, the question comes from Kelly in Allen, Texas. And Kelly writes, you've mentioned several times that SPDIF, the Sony Philips digital interface, has its complications. Indeed, it does. Uh, and USB does as well. That is also true. I've not heard you mention the RCA-style digital coaxial connection, but I imagine it faces some of the challenges as SPDIF. How do the three compare with each other? If USB isn't an option from a CD or Blu-ray player, for instance, is SPDIF or coaxial preferable? Are there any other options I'm forgetting? Thanks for sharing your knowledge and experience with us. Well, my pleasure. First thing, I, I suppose I, I get a little confusing because, you know, there's a lot of stuff here to learn. There's a lot of stuff to talk about. But co a coax, you know, an RCA cable, how come I never have one? Because I'm not prepared. You'd think in all of the stuff up here in this recording studio, we'd have an RCA. But you know what an RCA <laughs> connector looks like. Um, by golly, you'd think up here we'd have something. Um, well, I, 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 should, I should just get one, just so we all know. But um, anyway, uh, everything that Gus is, has up here is a quarter-inch plug, or it's, uh, <laughs> there's, there's not an RCA to be seen. There's a USB. We all know what a USB cable looks like. Uh, and I just... Boy, you know, we don't use RCA a whole lot up here because it's single-ended and we prefer balanced. And the synths and all that, of course, use these quarter-inch plugs to plug the various voltages and things. Anyway, I'm going to assume you know what an RCA cable is. The RCA cable is actually, the coax is actually SPDIF, the Sony Philips digital interface. And Toslink, or your optical cable, same thing. Sony Philips digital interface. In fact, if we look at the ways to connect up a digital audio thing and, and ignore USB for the moment, you, you have coax, toslink, and what we call AES EBU, and that's the balanced cable. So those are the three main ways to get something in. All of those are SPDIF. Even the, A, the one we call the AES, the Audio Engineering Society, European Broadcast Union, AES-EBU, that's actually SPDIF too. It's just, it's just a higher level balance thing. But the, the format is the same. And the Sony Philips digital interface, while fine, what it does is it takes all the various clocks and separate digital data inside of your transport or your server or whatever you have and mashes it, multiplexes it all down into one stream. And then that becomes the SPDIF. It comes out the coax, it comes out the toss link, it comes out the XLR cable. And that goes into your DAC. And now your DAC has to use another process to take it all back apart again, back into its component areas, which is a word clock, a master clock, a bit clock, and, and the data, and you have all these various lines, okay? And the process of multiplexing it down and pulling it back out is not my favorite way of doing it. We used things like PLLs, phase lock loops. Um, uh, to, it, it, you can get timing issues. You've got to have to reclock everything. Uh, yeah, you can deal with it, but it's, it's, not, it's not the preferred method of doing it. Now, the other way of doing it is to keep the, the data, all the clock, the separate clocks and the data separate. And to do that, we use a format called I squared S. And that's basically what we engineers talk about inside of a DAC and inside of a transport. And you want to just connect those up uh, as they are. So clock to clock, word, you know, data, all that stuff goes together without being multiplexed down and then pulled back out as it happens in SPDIF. So, some companies, well, we basically, years ago, a company called Audio Alchemy, Doug Goldberg and that, came up with sort of the idea, the first person I knew about anyway, to separate out those things and don't use SPDIF. And they used 
sort of a, a DIN connector, which is, I don't know if you can see this, my glasses are caught up in it. This is a DIN connector. And it's, it's a little round thing and it's got a, a bunch of pins on it. And they use that as a means of getting the I squared S data from their transport or whatever it was they had into the DAC. And that lasted for a while and then went away. Many years later, we picked back up on that and every one of our audio products now has I squared S out and in. And, and we just use the HDMI connector. HDMI is, is, a, is a great cable. Um, we don't use the, the HDMI standards because we don't really buy into all of that. But the cabling system is quite well. So all of our products, you have an I squared S out and an I squared S in. And that's the right way to do it. Now, and we have published, and you can look up online, that we publish the, the pinout, the formats. I mean, we, we kind of invented a new way of doing it following Doug's lead. And we uh, produced this standard, the I squared S standard. Now, there's probably eight or nine companies out there that have taken our formatting and applied it to theirs. We'd love to see it as kind of a standard in high-end audio. The more that do it, the, the more very, uh, you know, choices that we have. But that's the right way to do it. All that said and done, if you don't have a piece of PS audio equipment with the proper I squared S output and input, then I think my favorite is either AES EBU or coax. Those, and, but they're spadiff. But those are my two favorite ways of doing it if you don't have USB. Okay, thanks. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Thank you.